Welcome, everybody. Uh, welcome to Low Code and JavaScript are a match made in heaven. My name is Alex Freudman. I'm the CEO of a company called Profound Logic, and my company helps organizations with application development and application transformation, both by creating tools to help our customers along in that journey and also by providing consultancy and, and services. So our typical engagement is to transform a large custom legacy application uh, into an application that is modern. And for us, as well as for our customers, that usually means taking them from an older a legacy language and embracing Node.js on the server side and JavaScript on the client side. Now, some of the applications that we help transform are truly massive, and instead of just throwing a bunch of developers at the process, I had to figure out a more effective and a more efficient way to deliver that type of a transformation. And so I started building a framework, a framework that I called ProfoundJS. And so in this session, I'll tell you a little bit about how that evolved and how our framework ultimately became a low-code low platform that is based on JavaScript. So let me start off by telling you that I've always believed that application development in general is just too darn complicated. You need to uh, orchestrate and connect so many different and sometimes complex technologies. There's the front end, the back end, REST API, web servers, databases, CI, CD, and the cloud. Um, and I've been doing software development for 20 plus years, and I can tell you that things were actually uh, simpler 20 years ago for developers, at least that's my opinion. Uh, and maybe the types of applications that we were building, uh, maybe those were simpler, and in some cases, they weren't even browser-based applications. But as our environments grew in complexity, I don't think application development tools and methods have done a great job at keeping up in terms of keeping things uh, simple. So the question that I've always asked myself, and you can say that this has been my life's work is how can I simplify the process of application development? What can I do so that when you build an application, it can be done with less teams, less code, less work overall? And my first epiphany in all of this, and it's something that made sense to me, is that you have to double down on JavaScript. So for, for a very long time now, that has been my message to my customers, that you should use JavaScript for all of your needs, both for the front end and uh, the back end as well. And when you double down on JavaScript, um, the following becomes easier. So development becomes easier because you're just concentrating uh, on one language. Integration becomes easier because you're pretty much integrating JavaScript on the front end with JavaScript on the back end, rather than trying to connect different languages together. And of course, training becomes easier for the same reasons. Um, and it's not that other languages don't have uh, their place, but here I'm primarily comparing things like PHP or maybe Java or .NET when it comes to creating uh, business applications, which is the, type of, the types of applications that my customers uh, typically create. So let me now introduce you to a gentleman by the name of Brendan Eich. He is the inventor of JavaScript and is also the co-founder of Mozilla. And he has a famous quote. He says, always bet on JavaScript. Uh, so JavaScript, uh, it has had a ton of growth since it, its early beginnings, since the 1990s. Uh, and there are always naysayers saying that, well, JavaScript will eventually hit, it, hit its limits. Uh, but I think it's safe to say that JavaScript is no longer trying to prove itself now. Uh, for example, it's the standard for browser applications. Uh, in fact, these days, that's the only high-level language that is understood by a modern browser. It's also used heavily in mobile. It's the standard for uh, web services and API because REST API is pretty much the standard and that uses JavaScript object notation. And it's also a great option on the server with uh, Node.js. So Brenda, Brendan here was uh, absolutely right when he said, always bet on JavaScript. Um, so basically these days, well, you just can't avoid JavaScript. It's, it's uh, most likely that it's somewhere in there, part of your uh, tech stack, um, because if you're working on anything that relates to web, cloud, REST API, 
uh, you know, you're going to find JavaScript somewhere in there. So with that, I think it makes sense to double down on JavaScript and use it everywhere on the client side and on the server side. And this is the type of recommend recommendation uh, that I've been making uh, to my customers. And, and even before the idea uh, was popular, even in the early days of Node.js, uh, this, this is something that I've embraced. Uh, but I did start running into roadblocks. For example, customers would sometimes question me about uh, whether JavaScript made sense for uh, top-down business logic and processes. And they kept running into the infamous callback hell, uh, which, which is a problem due to the asynchronous uh, nature of JavaScript, especially when you're trying to code business logic on the server side. And a lot of this is nowadays, uh, it's addressed by uh, async await, so a feature in JavaScript called async await. Um, but I started implementing Node.js apps way before async await was even available. And I came up with a solution in a system that is arguably even simpler than async await. So early on, I realized how malleable JavaScript was. So it's an interpreted language, first of all. Uh, and you can easily you know, like build JavaScript on the fly, evaluate it on the fly. It's easy to build uh, supersets for JavaScript. And that's kind of what I did at the time uh, by using a feature in JavaScript that's called uh, require, uh, require extension. I built this transformation process that takes uh, top-down business logic, and regardless of whether it had a like, database request or API request or file server request, I made sure that it ran well asynchronously, even though the developer may have coded things in a top-down manner where one thing happened after another. So all of this was happening, uh, you know, the framework was taking care of it and all of this was happening uh, like automagically and the developers were not required to think in terms of callbacks or in terms of promises even, uh, which is where the hurdle was for many of, of my customers that were new uh, to JavaScript. <clears throat> And then another objection that I heard from customers is that JavaScript to them often felt like it was um, uh, somewhat generic compared to some of the other alternatives. It was uh, just capable of too many things. You could use it to build games, for example, or you could use it to build a streaming service. Uh, but for my, for my customers, they specifically needed to build database-driven business application and JavaScript and Node, they were certainly capable of it, but uh, the functionality wasn't just like automatically baked in without having to assemble packages and, and so forth. Uh, and so I decided to address that issue as, as well. I realized that um, business applications, they all have very similar characteristics. Um, they're, they're all going to be typically going to be database driven apps that read data, write data, summarize data and perform calculations that present that data to users, allow users to update that data. They're going to need web servers. They're going to need some form of mobile access. Typically, there's going to be some form of uh, security uh, and authentication. So why not codify all of those standards rather than reinvent the wheel every time there's a new project? Um, <clears throat> so this is where I started adding to the framework. And so I made things uh, sort of inher inherent to the framework where like a web server was already kind of built in. You didn't even have to code, let's say, Express.js or anything like that. That was kind of taken care of for you. Uh, database access was a matter of configuration. So you didn't have to write code to connect to a database or anything like that. Uh, auth authentication was part of it. Um, so all of these things were already saving a bunch of time uh, for, for me, for my team, for my customers. Uh, and then we found out that for some of, of the customers, the bottleneck was front-end development. And, and so I came up with a unique idea that would allow um, us and uh, my customers that were using the framework to visually design interfaces in a point-and-click manner. So, and all of this was happening in a browser-based uh, environment. And as part of that, we made uh, a ton of widgets, hundreds of different widgets that could just be dragged and dropped and configured to make uh, web interfaces uh, just work without having to write a bunch of code. And in fact, you could even build interfaces without writing a line of code. 
uh, and only introduce code if, if something was really, really custom. And so, and then eventually we made this compatible with other popular frameworks uh, f uh, like React and Vue. Um, you could just kind of design something and drop, and drop it in as, let's say, a React component. The other big thing that I worked on is um, making it easy to connect this visual design environment to uh, a customer's database. So you could configure uh, these different database connections and then you could drag and drop columns right out of a database right into that visual designer. So you could, let's say, create a text box or a drop down box. Uh, and on top of that, uh, there was this ability to connect, let's say, a widget like a drop down directly to a database visually. Um, and this was done all through like these uh, point and click properties where you didn't have to write code. So for example, here we have uh, like a customer drop down and it can be configured to load data uh, from a database table that has those customers in it. And then you just kind of get something like this and you get it all without having to write like a web service or really having to write any code manually at all because it's all designed visually. Uh, so eventually I, I took uh, all, all of this work and I, um, I packaged it all up and published it. I published it as a dev platform to a website called profoundjs.com. And it became this full blown cloud based IDE. I added a lot of other features to it. Uh, I made it free to kind of get going with it and, and get started with it. And it gives you this visual design for interfaces that I was talking about, but there's also a code editor based on Monaco. If you're not familiar with Monaco, that's a, um, that's basically Microsoft's component. The same, it's the same editor that they use in uh, VS Code, uh, but it can be uh, repurposed as a component in a browser environment. We also built the visual, uh, uh, visual Git interface so you can commit changes and so forth. Uh, if you're creating an application, it will automatically create like a container for you. So the containerization um, was kind of taken care of. It already came with a database, it already came with a web server. Um, so all of these uh, things made it easier to just kind of get down to your application logic without having to think about all the plumbing uh, like you would with, with traditional projects or traditional programming. Um, so this already required much less code than the typical way of building apps. Uh, and then I ran into uh, this gent gentleman right here. Uh, so I've already introduced you to two guys already. The first one was Br Brendan Eich, the inventor of JavaScript. Uh, and the second was Alex Schroepen, of course. He is the man that needs no introduction. Uh, and this third guy, he's, an, he, he's not quite as well known as Alex. His name is Elon Musk or something like that. But uh, let's hear what he has to say about application development. So in the past, um, be, uh, in, in the past, people used to measure a programmer's productivity by counting lines of code. Um, but then in this recent interview that I watched with Elon Musk, he declared that the best developers accomplish their goals with as little code as possible. And then he followed up with a tweet saying, the less code, the better. One point for adding a line of code, but two points for deleting a line of code. And so bloatware is the devil. And so this is where I had my next epiphany. And for my framework, I decided I had to embrace uh, no code slash low code. Basically the idea that you can create full applications and, and, and potentially API all visually without having to write all of that code or sometimes write any code at all. And of course the advantage is you can now build apps uh, so much faster and it also becomes easier to maintain the applications. So I decided to add to my framework, uh, which already had the, the visual designer for interfaces uh, and, and some of that inherent database connectivity, I decided to add the ability to build business logic in a visual way through a point and click drag and drop interface. So this is something that uh, like in the designer, for example, a button click or any event uh, can trigger, you know, typically that would trigger some code to run. And that and that's capability still stays. You can still trigger code to run, but in addition to that, the event can trigger um, a series of steps that are created without writing any code, and they're creating using this concept called plugins. Um, 
so this concept called plugins uh, <clears throat> allows you to kind of pick what you want to do, and that's that's you picking a plugin. And by the way, I had then uh, gone ahead and added a ton of plugins for for typical things that you would do uh, in a business application. Uh, and so each one of those plugins is 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 programmed to ask you a series of questions. They're all con they're all contextual. And then they, it kind of generates a snippet of JavaScript code in a predictable way on the fly. This on the fly part is, is very important because the generated code uh, that I'm referring to, that's not stored anywhere. Uh, it's generated on the fly using that require extension that I was talking about earlier. Uh, so that it really makes this no code plugin a superset of JavaScript. So the only thing that's stored are the answers to the questions in, in JSON format. Um, and so you can see where JavaScript being as malleable as it is, and that's what allows something like this uh, to happen. Whereas with other languages, I think it would have been a lot harder to accomplish uh, something like this. Uh, so with these plugins, and you can kind of see some of this on, on, the, on the screen, uh, you basically, you know, uh, describe what you're doing, and then you're telling it, well, what would you like to do? And when you're s telling it what you'd like to do, you're selecting the plugin. And let's say in this case, we said, well, I want to update some database records. Okay, well, then it knows to ask you some, uh, some specific questions about that. So first it says, okay, well, tell me which database are you going to be updating? And it gives you a list of configured databases. And then it may ask you some additional questions, like in this case, it may show you some schemas and it may show you some tables that are available. Once you select a table, it will uh, perhaps show you a list of columns that you can update and you can then start tying those columns to either some calculations or perhaps to some data on a screen that the user has, in, uh, has, put, into, has put in. Uh, so there's a lot of flexibility and it just keeps asking you questions until it's gathered all the information it needs to build that uh, piece of functionality. Um, so that's how, you know, we, we've made it now a ton easier to build applications because you can describe it uh, in a point and click manner. But at some point, I realized that creating API is just as common as creating applications. So I, I use that same plugin architecture to help my customers design uh, API without writing code. So they would simply specify uh, like the input, the API input, what's coming in, how is it coming in, whether, whether that's on a query string or post or whatnot, and the API output, the HTTP method, and so forth. Uh, and it would just serve up, and of course, the, uh, the plugins or the steps, you know, the business logic that, you know, done in a point-and-click manner, uh, and then it would just uh, serve up the API with the appropriate business logic and the appropriate swagger documentation and all of that. So this is the type of stuff that can take uh, you know, potentially days to code up manually, you are now able to do that in a matter of minutes. Um, so whenever um, you hear no code, low code, uh, the typical objections that, that come up are, well, is this customizable? Uh, am, I gonna, am I gonna hit any, any sort of uh, limitations? And, and this is definitely valid. There's, there's many uh, no code and low code options. I didn't want that to be a limitation uh, with the framework that I was building. And this is where a JavaScript-based low-code system does have a major advantage. And I came up with this concept that I'm calling hybrid low-code. And you know, you know, first, you kind of have to answer the question, um, does the solution uh, target citizen developer. So a citizen developer is, let's, you know, it, it might be someone, let's say, in the, in the marketing department that needs a quick app built and they just kind of point and click their way through it. Um, but, you know, they're, they're not going to, they may hit those limitations and they're not expecting to kind of dive in and go deeper. Uh, but a solution like this that targets developers, you know, true developers or developers in IT is going to have a way to introduce code. Uh, and I qualify that introduce code in a hybrid way because you don't want to just be able to take everything you, that you've built and just export it as one big uh, blob of code. It's That would be the bloatware that we want to avoid. But you just want to granularly introduce code where it's needed. Uh, and of course, it has to also kind of play along with the rest of the tools that developers use. So the CI, CD tools and interfaces to things like Git, 
uh, and connecting to any existing uh, app apps or, or programs or, or whatnot that you've written outside the system. So what does a hybrid, uh, what does hybrid low code look like, at least within our environment? Well, if you think of your business logic as this series of steps that were all designed with these no code plugins, a hybrid solution uh, would allow you to introduce a step where you can actually write some code. So in this example, uh, like in this particular example, we're mass updating uh, <clears throat> customer credit limits. And so the fetching of the customers and the updating of the customers, all of that happens without code. But for the actual credit limit calculation, because, you know, potentially um, it's intricate, we've written a couple lines of code here. Uh, <clears throat> so again, uh, in, in this environment, in this overall environment, there's a full IDE with a nice uh, JavaScript editor, the Monaco editor, and you can pretty much do anything that you want. And there's even this uh, insert dynamic data button, if you can see that on the screen, that will automatically pull up a, a list of all of the objects and all of the variables that are accessible uh, within the code that are, that, are, that are available to you from that no code or low code environment. Uh, so, so for example, you, you can see that that customer credit limit property is something that you're able to access in code. You simply click on it and it just inserts it into your code. So this is where my framework Profound.js stands right now, um, or perhaps I should not be, I should no longer be calling it a framework, but a low code uh, platform. Uh, so it allows you to build business applications uh, up to 10 times quicker. Uh, and often it's all done without writing a single of code, a single uh, line of code. Uh, it allows you to maintain apps uh, in an easier way, but at the same time, you can you can still introduce code. You can still use Node.js and JavaScript, so there are no limitation. So this is something that I and my team are, are going to keep improving for a while, and I personally can't wait to see what we're going to come up with next. All right, so that's my presentations. Uh, that's my presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. My email is aroitman at profoundlogic.com. You can also go check out our cloud environment where the, fra where the framework is available at profoundjs.com. And I will see you uh, in Rambly.